2nd December, Wahine Toa 2. Two female world champion boxers return home to Northland to defend their world titles in front of a raucous Whangare crowd. With a stacked undercard featuring Jerome, the Panther Pompalone. Wahine Toa 2, December 2nd, live on Sky Arena and Sky Sport Now pay per view. Go to skyarena.co.nz. Mare Motu and Lani Daniels are New Zealand's pro boxing queens. They are Wahine Toa, and they will be headlining the Wahine Toa Fight Night in Whangarei, Mackay Stadium. You'll be able to catch it on Sky Sport Now and Sky Arena for pay per view. You'll also be able to buy tickets at dnlevents.co.nz. It is brought to you by Burger King. Mia Motu, who helps headline that fight, is an IBO Super Bantamweight world title holder. And she'll be taking on her Indian challenger, Chandni Mehra, in a 55 kg fight of Warriors. Mayor, Chani, welcome. Before we get going, Mayor, can you please explain to Chani what Wahine Toa means and the importance of it? It's a female warrior in Māori, yes. and it's very something special and sacred to our culture. So that's what it means. Yeah. A strong, very tough, yes. physically and mentally female. Is it similar in your culture? <clears throat> yes, you know, there are many fighters in our country. In amateur especially, we are very, very um, good fighters in amateur. It's very, very popular in India. Are you a warrior? Yes, of course. <laughs> what makes you a warrior? Um, you know, fighting inside the ring and the attitude which I have inside the ring, that, that's the perfect example of me as a warrior, you know. I love to fight, I love to show my talent inside the ring. So yeah, how a warrior fights, it's that what I, you know, show inside the ring. Uh, I've seen it from you. You like to throw a punch, you like to take a punch. Is that the thing that you, you pride yourself on? Yeah, definitely. That's, that's where I get my strength from, you know. It's who I am, it's my identity as well, you know, like Shandi was saying, you know, she showcases it in the ring and so do I. How did you build that identity? Why did that become such a big part of you? Definitely, I'd have to say, you know, my coach, you know, my coach really grabbed my greatness out of me, you know, because I knew, I knew I had the ability, but I didn't actually back myself and believe in myself. And my coach, Isaac Peach, showed me that. And then also my other little coach, Zen, you know, they've worked alongside me <laughs> and just shown my strength. And your children? Oh, my children are the, you know, they're, they're the ones that keep me balanced, my kids, you know, so they bring the softness out of me. Mm. Five of them. <laughs> Five. They also keep you busy. Yeah, they keep me busy. Yeah. yeah. When you look across at Chani, you've fought a lot of people. You see the toughness. You see. Oh, definitely. You, you know, I always say like a smiling assassin <laughs> is dangerous. You know, <laughs> when someone's angry and aggressive, I'm like, oh, I've got you. Yeah. yeah. But a smiling assassin, yeah, dangerous. Looks very calm, yeah. very calm, patient, relaxed. So yeah, that's how I see her. Yeah, it's gonna be a fight. If you ask me, I'm a very normal person, very, you know, out of this uh, mess, like fighting and all that. I love, like to be cool, calm, sweet, like a good girl, yeah. Mm -hmm. But inside, uh, inside the ring, I'm totally different. And that's how it should be as a yeah. player. <laughs> you two are very zen. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> I think once you just get, I think it's, it's different. Like we don't let the, our mouths do the talks. We let our fists do the talks. Yes. Yeah. That's just, you end up eating your own words. I've seen heaps of fighters do that. It's important for you. You've got an example to set, don't you? Definitely, you know, I'm an ambassador for I'm Hope. You know, I'm very, very precious about our children and our mental health. So I'm totally against trash talking. And the reason why is because we're paving the way for the next generation, right? You know, generations have always just, they've lacked and failed us. And look at the generation now. And the reason why our generation is so bad right now is because we're teaching and normalizing abuse, you know, trash talking, that's showing our kids that it's okay to speak in violence and be aggressive. And we're normalizing that as adults and as um, ambassadors and role models, which we shouldn't be, and which I'm totally against, you know, we should be talking to people 
normally because we're showing the kids and we're showing the generation that this is how we talk to people. But if we're going to trash talk, then we're normalizing that. Mm. And I don't, I'm against that. You know, I, I want to be a role model and change that generation and pave the way because our generation is our children, are our future. And if we make the change now, then we can show our children that this is how we normalize it. This is how we talk to people. Mm. Don't tra trash talk because you're normalizing abuse. That's where violence comes, you know, mental abuse, physical abuse. You're, t you're showing our kids that it's OK to be abusive. Mm. And that's what the generation has done. And I want to change that. And that's why I'm like, no, you know, when it gets in the ring, that's where you show the control. That's where you show aggression because it's controlled and watched by doctors, you know, and you have referees. So it's all controlled. But outside the ring, mm. no, I respect, you know, because that's what I want to show the children. I want to be that role model yeah. because at the end of the day, it's not about me. It's about our children because they're the next generation to come through. Mm. And they have to deal with a lot of faceless stuff. Like you're being the face of this conversation, but online it's faceless, isn't it? Yes. And people say what they want. Yeah, because they, because people, role models, like our celebrities are showing that it's okay to trash talk to other people. You're normalizing it and you're showing that to our children. So you're, our, kids, our kids are growing up and seeing that and they're thinking that they're normalizing it. Mm. I don't want to normalize that. And my kids, you know, I'm a role model for my kids. They look up to me. And my daughter said to me, don't ever trash, don't, you would never do that, eh, mum? And I realized, oh my gosh, I need to be that role model. Because, you know, we're damaging our children's mental health. We don't even realize what we're doing. For me, it's uh, talk, give respect, talk to the point, and show your talent inside the ring. Mm. That's it. Very simple. <laughs> it's a good chance for boxing to create a new movement and a new face yeah, of it. Oh, that's because everyone that's sold itself. Yeah, because everyone to. thinks boxing's aggressive and violent. Mm. No, you, the people yeah. that are speaking to other sport people, they're aggressive and violent. They're teaching our children how yeah. to be violent mm. and how to beat news their voices. No, boxing teaches you discipline, control. Doesn't mm. teach you just to be violent. Yes. Because I was such an angry person. And coming back to boxing, it taught me how to control my anger mm. and how to be calm. You know, it's, that's the best thing that I've learned in boxing. And, you know, I want to be that role model for our kids because at the end of the day, it's all about our children. Too many suicides here and it's sad. Mm. It's really sad because we have to watch our children die. And, and it's purely because we're teaching and allowing. We're, our kids are watching us. We're normalizing abuse. We're normalizing how we speak to people. Mm -hmm. It's not okay. And that's the good thing about my king, I Am Hope, really supports our kids. It's all about our kids because they're the next generation. We mm -hmm. pave that way for them. And if we do it right, we're looking after them. But at the moment, we're not nurturing our children. We're neglecting them because we're showing them violence. You know, when you think about people like Muhammad Ali, who, yes. who tailored that, he obviously did a lot of good things for his people as well. Right. But, you know, I suppose we've got to learn in time how to develop so it things. further from there, don't we? Yes. That boxing is more than that. Right. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. Now Definitely it's become it. so trending, you know, to trash talk. So, yeah. which is why people are, you know, um, learning and following everyone like that. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And look what it's done, though. Yes. It's made each generation worse. Worse. Yeah. Because they followed that. Exactly. And because we're normalized, I think that. it's very cool, but yeah. it's not. No, <laughs> yeah. no. It's but it's not. actually teaching abuse. Yes. Yeah. It's actually teaching it. Yes. Mm. And, and that's the worst thing here. You know, how many women call, call for abuse? Yeah. So many. So many. It's too much. Mm. And it's because we have allowed it. Exactly. We are the reason behind. Yeah. Mm. So we need to change that. Yeah. It's very important. So when you meet other fighters and you fight against other fighters, are you happy to become friends with them? Yeah, I'm always respectful because, yeah. you know, I always look at what they've done because I know what I've done and I know they've worked just as hard alongside me, you know. They're, they're in their camp training hard, sacrifices. Each fighter has a sacrifice to make, you know, and they're sacrificing family, you know, weight, cut, everything. And it's just, you know, putting your body on the line as well. Boxing is so physical and mentally it's straining. And I just, I respect every fighter that gets in the ring, you know, no matter what, because I respect them for what they've done for themselves. It's interesting because when you watch a lot of the top flight boxing, you do see people going at each other beforehand. You see smack talk, you see verbals, you see a lot of posturing. Yes, yes. Do you feel like that's a waste of time? A true sportsman is shown when you respect each other.
So for me, the respect is the most priority thing. So if I'm going to fight with any of the fighter, and even before the fight, after the fight, I make sure that I hug them after the fight. It's all mm. over, you mm. know. But when you step into the ring, you're punching them. Uh, you know, that's our job, you know, we have to punch. Yeah. yeah. That's why we are living for, you know, we have been training hard for. So we need to do our job. That's something completely different. It must have got testy at some point, though. Not just in the ring. Yeah. Only I only see it in the ring. Once it's once you hit in those ropes, that's it. We're on. Mm. Yes. You know, I just go straight tunnel vision, boom, and mm. I stay focused on my opponent. And you know, who wants it the most? <laughs> that's what it comes down to. That's your style, though, isn't yeah. it? Like you go in and you fight. Yeah. You, you're not hanging out. You're not no. throwing long punches. You're not coming in from angles. You're in the middle having a brawl. Yeah, just straight away. Yeah. Because that's you know, when the, once we hit that ring. That's it, you know. You're, I'm determined to get it, and that's what I want. You seem like a bit more of a flashy fighter, though. How do you cope with a brawler? Uh, as simple, um, like, uh, as we can see that um, I have uh, advantage of height, so, you know, I have to, you know, keep in my range. I need to play according to my game. So if Mia is going to come, like, in a shot of fighter, you come and brawling. That's how they do it with the close fight, usually. Mm. So for me, I need to keep my distance. I need to look at the opponent and work accordingly. Mm. Yeah. You've lost four times? Yes. Have they been brawlers? Um, no, not brawlers, I, I, I mean to say. But yeah, I mean, that was a new experience for me altogether. That time I was like, right now I'm 22 years of age. That time I did ha didn't had that good experience, I would say. Mm. But the fight was really good. I learned a lot of things. Yeah. You get up and keep going. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wahine to. I keep guess. Going, yeah. <laughs> as far as you're concerned, though, when you see a fighter who's going to fight on the outside, that's not necessarily your natural space. Uh, how does it go for you? I just stick to what my coach says. If he says, go forward, go forward. If he says, take your time, take your time. My coach is the eyes and I'm just yeah. the vehicle. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> so fights and it's worked out all right. It's worked perfectly fine. Yeah, this yeah. is a building point for both of you because yes. winning this fight is a chance to have a crack at the IBF belt. Yeah, definitely. You've got the IBO belt right now. Is this a stepping stone fight for you? Yeah, definitely. It's a stepping stone fight. Yep. So, but how much respect do you have to give to a stepping stone fight knowing what's next? I don't look at what's next. I just look what's on what I've got now. You know, everyone else's, that, that's everyone else's job to look what's next. My job is just to focus on what I've got in front of me and that's my opponent and that's all I focus on. I don't focus on anything else. Yeah, everyone can say, you got this, 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 and I just go, oh, okay, yeah, but I'm not focusing on that. I'm focusing on what I've got now, mm. what's in front of me. You can watch the tape, but I never trust because that fighter could completely change. Mm. You know, next minute you're hopping in a ring like they were orthodox and then they know how to do both. And then, you know, so you've got to prepare for everything. Mm. You're not just preparing for one. It's a very big thing for me, for all the Indians, because I'm the first Indian female fighter to have this opportunity to come up to this platform and fight for the world IBO belt fight. So, you know, uh, it's like a dream come true and a very big stepping stone for all of us. And yeah, I want to give my best. My coaches, my family, they have put a lot of effort uh, for me. Whatever I'm here is because of them. So I re really need to make them proud and I'll give my best. Have you brought a lot of them with you? Uh, no, I, it's me and my coach who's going to come. Makai Stadium up <coughs> north, yes. where Mia comes from. You're Kaitaia originally. Yeah, Pukiporo. That's her ground. Yes. There's just the two of you. It could be quite lonely in a stadium like that unless you can get some community it, behind right, you. Right, that's right. But, um, you know, I'm not just thinking about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just thinking about and like believing in myself right now that how I have to perform because it's just that, you know, you say it, that, you know, the community, the crowd matters. Of course it matters, but at some point, it's all you inside the ring. Yeah. So if you are ready for it, you believe in yourself, you know you've got this. Yeah. Yeah, sky is the limit. What's the biggest lesson you've learned in boxing up until now? Heading into this fight and how do you use it? Um, discipline and, uh, you know, uh, the consistency. That really matters because you don't know whom you're going to fight next. So, mm. you know, you have to be consistent to your work. So from starting at my childhood days, I've been taught this uh, lesson mm. from my mom because we come from an army background. So, you know, we've been taught since like my childhood that discipline is very important anywhere, everywhere. But especially in the sports, you have to be really, really uh, disciplined and uh, 
you know, have to uh, be really mentally fit. Physically fit is something different, but mentally fit is the most important thing in this uh, combat sport. Mm. Yeah. So that's getting up first thing in the morning. Yes. What time are we getting up in the morning to train? Uh, I get up at four. And, oh. Uh, yes. <laughs> and we have straight away 5.30. But I get up early because I need to do my things and like I, I love to meditate in the morning. So yeah, I, I give myself some time. You don't enjoy sleeping, do you, after that? Oh, it's hectic, chaos. Yeah, so 4.30 I'm up. I gotta quickly get all the kids' stuff ready and then out the door, hit to work and then work and then I train, mm -hmm. train in the morning and then back home, quickly shoot home, take the kids, drop them off to school <laughs> and then back, back into work mm. and then training in the afternoon, pick up the kids before training, drop them off home, get their stuff ready, dinner and jammies mm. and then off to training and then shoot back home and then try <laughs> relax. Well, you don't get long to relax, you go straight uh, to bed after that. Yeah, wow. I actually sometimes I don't even have time to have a shower because I'm that knackered, I'm like, I'm mm. out, I just hit the floor. With all that sacrifice though, it means when you get in the ring you know what you're fighting for. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this is the path that I choose and I love it. I enjoy it. It nice. keeps me insane. You know, it's the <laughs> one thing that keeps me insane and it keeps, boxing gives, gives me structure. Mm. So that's the good thing about it. Right. What is work between nine and five? Oh, it's boxing, speaking, it's everything. Yeah. 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 It's multiple stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You, <laughs> you got your finger in a few pies. No, I wish I could fit a pie in. <laughs> I can't eat a pie. Damn it. I'd love one. <laughs> but Farrah, what about you? Is it, is it boxing all the time? Um, yes, for now, it's boxing every time. Uh, yep. But uh, like during my normal days, I, always, uh, I also uh, go to my college. Like I'm in, mm. yeah, so I'm studying. So yeah, I go to the college. I love to sing. I love to do dancing and stuff. So yeah, mm. yeah. <laughs> Tyson Fury gets up and sings in the ring afterwards. Is that something that you'd be doing? You're going to grab the mic? <laughs> I dance. A, a <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I dance. That's cool. I would mean, like Mia to also teach me some uh, New Zealand dancing moves, something. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I would love cool. to. Fair enough. I see on your neck you've got a tattoo. I'm not sure if you can turn to the camera slightly. Peach oh, boxing. Oh, yes. Is that, that on the side? That, yes, that one yes. there. Oh, yeah. That one there. That's your gym. Yeah. Your gym obviously means a lot to you. Yeah if you're gonna be having it on your neck like that. Yep. What does it mean to you and how has it changed your life? Uh, they changed my life, that's what it means. <laughs> yeah. You know, they gave me a purpose of living and they taught me how to live. Yeah. Uh, and my coach found, he just saw potential in me. You know, both my coaches, Alina and Isaac and Boaz, you know, they, when I first walked into those doors, the first thing they said was, you're gonna be a world champion. And I was like, you're joking. <laughs> this is a kid. I didn't even mm. want to do professional boxing. I mm. was bloody scared of doing it. Mm. I was like, no way. I don't. That's for crazy people that can punch. And next minute, I ended up falling in love with it. And, you know, at the same time, it's, I found a purpose mm. for my life and started loving me and appreciating my children. You know, and I didn't know how to live because I was controlled by my ex abuser. So I was trying to find my own steps and trying to get back to life. But also I had a wall up mm. because I didn't want to let anyone in. And my gym broke that and yeah. told me, you know, that I could be great and I am great. Yeah. And they always told me that all the time. So yeah, they definitely hold something close to my heart. Yeah, here you are. Yeah. yeah. And here I am yeah. living life to the fullest and just enjoying it. Yeah. And, you know, no matter what, I'll still get back up and keep going. Yeah. You know, to people always, people to get so focused on, you know, they let the little things get them down when actually you can just get back up. It's how we get back up and carry on. Mm. You know, I've been in the worst situation ever in my life and I still got back up and still carried on. You know, so what's the worst that could happen? I get knocked out. <laughs> well, what? I'll still get back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm still going to get back up and I'll still keep fighting and keep doing what I love. Yeah. Boxing is my passion. It's my love. When you started answering that question, I could see you, you pause for a second and yeah. you feel the emotion. Yeah. You know, like I'm sure that you've inspired a lot of people and told your story to a lot of people to help them. Yeah. But you still, when you tell it, you feel it so incredibly deeply. Yeah, because it's close to my heart. Yeah. 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 It means a lot to me. 
for you hearing a story like that, it's quite an incredible story, Very isn't it? Incredible, and I'm. I just keep on listening to when she's saying, you know, it's very inspirational for me. It's not just only good days that are going to come. It's bad days, good days, ups and downs, keeps on coming in yeah. everyone's life. But we have to keep on moving, yep. moving forward. You know, that's what failures teaches us, mm. the hardships. Yes. And these all things will really pay off when we're going to give our best. We're going to mm. work hard for it. Mm. The hard work really pays off. That's why it's said like that. Mm. So. Uh, for me, this fight is as very important to me as well because my parents, my family has also, you know, worked hard, struggled for me a lot. So accepting that challenge coming into this boxing journey was a very tough decision which my mom took for me and she's been there throughout my journey. I used to fight with boys there. I used to spar with boys because there, there were no girls at that time. So, you know, getting those hard hits from the boys from, uh, and starting was really tough for me. I used to start bleeding and all those stuff would happen, but I never gave up. I was like, yeah. it's okay. I have to take it. If I want to be best, I have to take all these things. I kept on sparring. I didn't give up. And now it's like, you know, some of them, when I when I tell them to spar with me, they get scared. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because Chani is now has become a really good, better fighter. So, you know, um, she has really improved herself and made made her country and made her family proud. I would imagine as a young woman walking into a, a boxing gym like that, <clears throat> full of boys yeah. and, and having to ask them to yes. not hold back. Yeah, That yeah. must have been quite a thing to overcome. It's quite an yes. intimidating thing. Yes, because at first, you know, they were like controlling their power. But I said, no, don't control it. Just bring it on. I'll defend myself. I'll have to protect myself. You know, I learned it. So they used to hit me. I used to protect myself. I used to keep my guard up and all those. So this is how I learn slowly mm. that, yeah, I need to protect myself. I can't just go like this. Mm. Mm. It's going to bash me. I said, use your power. I'll protect. So this is how I learned. Then now, now it's so good in India. Now there are so many boxers, you know, and um, very good sparring partners. So where I'm training right now is there are numerous number of girls who are very in like international players in the major. So I'm having a good experience there. What was it like for your parents putting you in that situation? I mean, that must have been a thing for them as well to, to look at it and go, oh, are we happy with this? Yes. And, and, and they're backing you. Yes. Honestly, my dad, he was uh, not happy. I mean, he was literally telling me to stop, not don't do it because we don't want you to get hurt. And, you know, uh, I, we don't want your face you know, should look bad and it, like, like that. But I was like, Dad, I have to, I want to do something different, you know. I want to show that even girls are no less, not only boys, you know. Mm -hmm. Girls can do everything. In fact, girls are more stronger because they handle each and everything. Yeah, and best example is Mia, you know. I can see she handles each and everything, her, her work, her home and everything. So... You know, even I can do do it. So my dad was really happy and like, you know, she's now independent and she has taken her own decision. My mom was there for all my support. So yeah, uh, me and my mom, we didn't give up. And that's the reason why I'm here today. Mm. Yes. And you're blazing a trail. I understand you were one of the first female fighters in Dubai. Yes. So you, you've, you've been to places and done new things that no one's done before. It's, mm. it's right. quite inspirational. Yes, uh, I fought in Dubai. Like It's been like six to seven times I fought in Dubai mm. and in the South Korea and see all. I had my fight with this uh, very good boxer. Her name is Bomi Reshin. Uh, she is uh, ranking number five in worldwide. Uh, she was she is a very good fighter very good experience. I had there and then I fought in Australia in Sydney with Chanel Dargan mm. yeah, That was a quite oh, challenging, yeah. Yeah, fight for me and uh, It was a lovely fight that I had lovely lovely experience. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us Thank you so both much of you. For having us. No, it's been great having you and you of course can catch the fight on December 2, Sky Arena and Sky Sport Now. Grab your tickets at dnlevents.co.nz. It is not a fight to miss. Mia Motu versus Chandi Mera. It's going to be a great fight brought to you by Burger King. 2nd December, Wahine Toa 2. Two female world champion boxers return home to Northland to defend their world titles in front of a raucous Whangare crowd.
with a stacked undercard featuring Jerome, the Panther Pompalone. Wahine Tour 2, December 2nd, live on Sky Arena and Sky Sport Now pay-per-view. Go to skyarena.co.nz.